Okay, good morning, everyone. We're gonna work on continuity, and that's gonna lead us to piecewise functions today. And that's usually where kids struggle in what we call piecewise functions. So let's talk about continuity. And you can think that this is just continuous. Is a function continuous? And for almost everything in our lives, it's always continuous. Like, you don't just stop breathing and all of a sudden, boop, appear from one place to another. We all live continuous time streams. This isn't Star Trek. An idea of a continuous function is just a function that has no breaks. Has no breaks, has no jumps, right? No holes, that's the idea of a break. No vertical asymptotes. Right? These are things that we see that mess us up. We don't have any undefined points, right? no undefined. So if we have a function without these type of like problems, that function for the most part is continuous. Now all polynomial functions, polynomial, like if it's f of x is equal to x cubed plus blah, 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 Right? These are all continuous functions. When we get into trouble is when we start doing rationals. So polynomials are, let's say, are continuous. But usually when we end up with the problems are when we look at rationals. So fractions. That's when we end up with problems. when we could have issues. Also what we call piecewise functions. Right, these are when we're kind of like, uh-oh, be a little careful here. So let's talk about what a uh, con continuous by definition is. Oops. Continuous function. So a continuous function for us is, let's look at the definition. And we're looking at continuity at a point. And that's how we measure continuity. If something is continuous, it is continuous at all the points. So first let's look at the interior point. An interior point is a point in the middle of the graph, right? It's in the middle of the graph, not at an end point. Interior. That's interior, okay? So we can say a function y is equal to f of x, just to define that, is continuous at an interior point. C, we're going to call that C, which is like an X value of its domain, fancy word. If this is true, if the limit as X approaches C of F of X is equal to F of C. Okay, so it seems like a lot of fancy wording, but really if you break it down, it's just saying that what is the idea of a limit? The idea of a limit is that what we expect it to be is actually the value that it is there. Here's a dumb example. If write the limit as x approaches two of x plus three, okay, where let's say f of x is equal to x plus three, so for limits, what do we do? Don't we just plug it in? So that's going to be two plus three is five. That's the answer on my left-hand side. Does that actually look like F at two? Plugging it in. Well, F at two is, F at two is just two plus three. That's also five. 
does it look like what it actually is? And in almost all cases, yes, it looks like what it should be. But let's give you guys an example that is not continuous. So this is going to be on the side, on the side here. Let's see if something is not continuous. So if I write the limit as x approaches 3 of x minus 3 over x plus 3, x minus 3, okay? So my function here is f of x is x minus 3 over x plus 3, x minus 3, okay? Well, what's the limit if I plug in 3 here? We end up with 0 over 0. Let's go with 0 over 0. But it turns out we can factor the problem, and we can divide out. Oh, it's factored already. We can divide this out. We end up with the limit as x approaches 3 of 1 over x plus 3 it looks like it should be 1 over 6. But what is the actual value, actual? f at 3, what is this actual value? 3 minus 3 over 3 plus 3, 3 minus 3. The actual value is undefined. So this graph, by our simple definition here, it's not, it is not continuous because the limit says 1, 6, but the actual function value is undefined. It's not the same. So like we said before, when it comes to limits, like 99.9% of limits are always going to work. It's that 0.1% that kills us. So. What, the, what it looks like is that what it really is. And if it's true, not only the limit is approaching from the left and the right because the limit exists, it also is the value, okay? So we look at this picture, let's zoom in on this picture. Oh, I can't zoom in, but let's take a look at this picture that I drew over here. Okay, let's look at this one here. On my left side and on my right side, don't we approach the same value? And isn't the value also there? Yeah, it's a perfect storm. Everyone agrees that it should be that value. It's continuous. But a graph that doesn't look right, there's a hole. Let's call this uh, three and call this, let's say um, uh, one over six. So on this graph, let me ask you this question. On this graph, the right side looks like one over six. The left side is approaching one over six, but the value doesn't even exist. So this is not continuous. The limit might be one six, but the actual value does not exist. We also have a fun way of looking at limits when it comes to uh, what we call um, Endpoint limits. Let's do one more. This endpoint. An endpoint looks like this. As I'm approaching a point and it stops. Okay. As we approach a point and it stops. Let's say this is two. So does the limit, is this continuous up to two, but from the left hand side? Okay. So let's write this idea. Um, a function y is equal to f of x is continuous at a left endpoint a or is continuous at a right endpoint B of its domain 
Endpoint B of its domain, of its domain, if this part is true, the limit as x approaches a from the right side of f of x is equal to f of a, or the limit as x approaches a from the left side of f of x equals to f at a. So looking at this graph on top, this first example that I gave you guys, is this graph continuous from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity? Well, no, the graph totally stops. But is this continuous up to two at least? And the answer is yes. So the limit as we approach two looks like it's gonna be, let's give you guys a number, let's call it at one. It looks like it's gonna be one. And the value is one, they both are in agreement. So the, the limb, sorry, the graph is continuous up to two. And this is what this is really saying. From the right side of the graph, does the graph look like the y value that's supposed to be there? Does the graph look like, is the limit the same as the actual value? Now, why do we have to say this? Is because you're gonna end up with a problem that looks like this. Problem looks like this. Let me draw in red. Here is my graph. And I'm gonna draw you guys a graph that goes like this. Call this two, one, and two. And the question is the graph continuous from the left side as we approach two? Is the graph continuous as we get closer to two? Nope. It doesn't even hit two. Take a look. Is this graph continuous as we approach two from the left side? And the answer is no, not continuous. But from the right side, you see how the point is actually there? This is yes. This is continuous from the right. Simple nuanced things. So if you look at it, if the value is there and the limit says, hey, what does it look like as we get closer? They're in agreement, we're in good shape. And if it's not, see that's not, doesn't look like the actual value. This statement here does not work because f of a, f of two is not the same as that left limit. Let me write that. So, so it can be split like in, within the same problem? Yeah, but the question is what's continuous? The whole overall problem is not continuous. No, right, there's a big break. But we could say, you know what? On the right side, it is continuous, but only up to two. But the left side, since it's not touching that Y value because we jumped here, it is not continuous. So let's ask this question. Is a limit as X approaches two of F of X the same from, let's say on the left side here, left side, little dot, is it continuous? Answer is no, because f of two, let's write the answer. This is gonna be, let me write this part. This would equal to two, and this is equal to one, and they are not the same. But on the right side, the limit as x approaches two plus f of x on the right side, does this equal to f of two? Answer is, whoops, one and one. This is yes, this is no. But then we can say, according to our first definition, are we continuous at a point? Are we continuous at a point? Is there even an overall limit at two? There is no limit at uh, x approaches two. If I write the limit, the limit as x approaches two, f of x, no right, left, no plus or minus. 
Do they agree? Left side and right side? They do not agree. This is no limit. So of course it's not continuous. It doesn't even follow our first um, definition. Now, what about if I'm just looking at other points? Yeah, if I'm looking over here, continuous, 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 fail, right? It's all continuous except at that one point. You know, that's the important point. So all graphs, for the most part, are continuous, 99.9%, except for that one crazy point. Okay, so we said polynomials are continuous. Let's look at rationals as they're not continuous. So we've seen rationals. And really, it depends on what type of fractions we're talking about. Like if I write um, x squared plus 3x over 2, that's a fraction problem. But I can rewrite this as 1 over 2, x squared plus 3 over 2. And that's a polynomial. Right, this is really a polynomial. And if you look, there are no numbers I plug in that don't exist. So we're totally cool. But when I start giving values like one over x plus two, we know that x cannot be negative two. And since x can't be negative two, we know that's gonna be a vertical asymptote for us. So I should be thinking that this graph looks kind of like a negative two, some type of weird vortex thing. And of course that's not continuous. This is like a Final Destination movie where the roller coaster goes off the track. Not continuous for sure. Now, I'm gonna give you guys another problem and this is what we call a piecewise function. So we're going to talk about how to write a piecewise function quickly. This is something that you learn in Algebra 2 and somewhat in pre-calc. And these are just pieces of functions. We're going to make a function out of different pieces, out of different equations. So the first thing I'm going to say is um, f of x is equal to, normally this is what we would say. Normally don't we write f of x is equal to like 2x plus 3, something like this. But f of x now is going to be made up of a, Sorry, my um, iPad froze. Give me a sec. Okay, so we have f of x equal to, and you draw this little like bracket, right? That's what we call it, it's a bracket. Sometimes it looks like, you know, a Bill Clinton, depending on Jay Leno, depending on how you want to draw it. And we're going to separate this into um, two different graphs. Let's say, um, 2x and um, negative x plus 1. And we're going to say when x equals to 1. So x is greater than or equal to 1, and x is less than 1. You guys ever heard of the word hangry? You get hangry. So you get angry when you're hungry. And when you eat, all of a sudden you're the nicest person in the world again. This is kind of what piecewise function is. On certain time periods, you look like this, and other time periods, you look like this. And the conditions, so this is the idea. This is the graph, and these are the conditions. So when x is greater than 1, please graph this graph. When x is less than 1, please graph this graph. Okay? So if you haven't figured that out, that's all it is. It's when x is greater than 1, we're going to graph one type of graph. And when x is less than 1, we're going to graph a different type of graph. Now, I like labeling where the points change at 1. And all you do is plug that x in. x is 1, plug it in. That's 2. 1, 2. That's going to be a solid dot. Because we're allowed to be at 1. For my second graph, x 
is less than one, so don't touch one. But what does that look like? That's plug it in. When I plug in one here, negative one plus one is zero. I make that a uh, holy dot, okay? That's holy now. It's gonna be holy. Oh, that's terrible. It's gonna be a hole. So the next thing, we're just graph a line. Since this slope for the first graph on top, when x is greater than one is positive two, that's a slope of rise up two over one. Looks something like that. In calculus, doesn't have the most perfect graph in the world. We're fine. We just know it's, uh, the slope is positive two. On my second equation, the slope is negative one. So we know we're approaching negative one, something like this. So that's all we're doing. We're graphing. Okay, just to verify, the graph, when it's less than one, looks like this here. This world over here is before you had Mr. Co for math. Life sucks. This graph up here is after you had Mr. Co for math. <laughs> that's a dumb story. That's the idea. And if X was different, we would move that red and blue line to left to right. Now, is this graph continuous? Looking at it, obviously not. But it could be as simple as this. Now, if I just ask this question, is F of X continuous? You could graph it, and that's 100% okay. But the fast way, Just check. Our rules say, does the limit exist? Does the limit as x approaches a of f of x equal to f at a? Okay, and we're gonna use this rule to check. And it might seem a little harder than it is, but we're gonna follow this rule. First, does the limit exist? So at one, from the left side and right side, let's take a look here. The limit as x approaches 1 from the right side, what are you going to be? And are you equal to the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side? That's test if this is true. So on the right side, oops, yeah, on the right side, remember how this is right. So that's my right equation here because x is greater than 1. So just plug it in. 2 times 1 is 2. And that's what the right side looks like. No graphing needed. No graphing needed. On the left side, okay, here's my left side. When I plug in, um, negative 1 plus 1. Mr. Ko, wasn't that negative? No, it wasn't. It just meant from the left side of 1. Just from the left side of 1. This gives us zero. So if the left limit, sorry, if the left limit and the right limit do not agree, this is no limit, no limit. And that makes this not gonna work for us. Now, just a quick question, what is actually F at A? What is the actual value at F at one? The actual value of F at one can only be assumed by this guy up here, because he's the equal to. He's a solid. So the actual value should have been, just to talk about it, this should have been two. But this is also no limit. So this is not a continuous function. Not a continuous function. Now, are all piecewise functions not continuous? No. We can actually make functions that are continuous. Now let me go ahead and give you a, another simple line equation. If I say f of x is made up of, here's my another example, is um, draw a little face here. And we're going to say um, x plus 1 when y is equal, sorry, not y, when x is equal to negative 1. And 
that's going to be zero, right? Okay. So if I say next one is um, x over one uh, over two plus one over two. Actually, no. I'm going to make this a little negative plus one over two, like that. Yeah, ugly. And then, um, sorry, I need to make this an inequality. Okay. All right. Fixed it, I think. Nope, I didn't fix it. I need to change one thing. This is a minus. There you go. Now I fixed it. Okay. So. First, we do check the limit. The limit does the left side equal to the right. So all you do is just plug it in, plug it in, plug it in. The left side is, we'll label that with the red. That's the left side. The right side. Okay, so when we plug it in, left side is negative one. Oops. Negative one over 2 minus 1 over 2 and the right side is negative 1 plus 1. That's 1 over 2 minus 1 over 2 equals to negative 1 plus 1 0 to 0. Hey the left and right limit look exactly the same. All right we're good. What's the limit? The limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x is 0. That's what the graph looks like. Okay, no graphing. We didn't graph it. We just plugged it in like algebra 1. Now that we know the limit exists, so remember, the continu continuity is if the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to the actual value there. So what is the actual value? Well, at negative one, f at negative one is assumed by the top equation because of the equal sign. And when we plug in negative one, it's going to be zero. The limit is zero and the function is zero. This is true, this is continuous. And that's all very algebraic. But you could have drawn this out. But drawing, I feel like, takes some more work, especially if it's a harder problem. I'm going to draw this equation out. You said negative 1. Here's my problem. Da, 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 da. Here's my problem child. So at negative 1, plug in the problem. On the right, that would be a solid with a slope of 1 over 1. On the left, if I plugged in, we did it over here already. If I plug in negative 1, we still end up with a hollow 0 with a slope of negative 1 half. Looking at this graph, are there any breaks? No. It's almost like you guys ever um, watch uh, the Olympics when they do like relay races where you hand off the baton, right? We're handing the baton right off. This is a good transfer. It's funny when you see um, Olympic athletes fail at the one thing they're good at. I'm sorry, that's sad. Darn it, this is recorded. But you guys should go type in YouTube, like fail, like baton passes. It's terrible. All right. Okay, so this is the basic idea. Now, sometimes, let's take a look again. Sometimes they don't work. Piecewise function, don't connect, not continuous. And sometimes they do connect, right? They both equal to the same number. Great. Now I'm going to give you one, and you're going to tell me, you're going to make it up. So next one is, what could k be? What I mean is, what could k be so f of x is continuous? Now what you guys are going to do is, you guys are going to tell me what value could I plug the hole with to make this function now continuous. Now, 
here is how we're going to write it. f of x is equal to, let's do um, x minus 4. Whoops, I'm sorry. I need to make a bracket. Sorry, our little system here. So we're going to say x uh, plus 3x minus 1 over x minus 1 when x is less than 1. And what, okay, um, when x is not less than 1, I'm going to write this a little differently, okay, watch. When x is not 1, when x is not 1, you can have a party whenever you want, when your parents aren't home, partying on the first function. Now, what should k be when x is 1 so that this function on top is going to be continuous? So what should k be to make this function continuous? Now, remember, here is our definition. If something is continuous, the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to f of a. What it looks like is what it is. It is what it is. So what does the graph look like at 1? Well, that's plug it in x, sorry, what? So we're going to say f at 1, okay, which is not really there, but we're going to plug it in. 1 plus 3, 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 1. That's 0 over 0. Indeterminate, but some of you guys are screaming at me, Mr. Ko, you should got rid of these beforehand. Should have done that. Okay, so the limit as x approaches 1 of x plus 3, x minus 1, over x minus 1. Those should have divided out. This gives us 4 because 1 plus 3 is 4. So it should look like 4. That's what it sh should look like. And if I graph this, here's our graph. And since the graph looks like a regular line, 1, 2, 3, draw a line at 1. Here's 1. We end up with a Whole. That's what the graph is. Okay, that's what the graph looks like. So everyone notice that there's a small hole, right? Because if I plug in one, it's indeterminate. It's undefined. So what could k be to plug in that hole? Uh, uh, well, the limit is 4 here. So what should the function be? The function should be 4. k should be 4. And if k was 4, at 1, the point at 1, k would be 4, and that plugs in the hole. See, that plugs in the hole. Totally, plugs in the hole. Now, the overall function f of x is continuous if k equals to 4. So how do we figure out what k should be? We have to figure out what the limit should look like. And if we know what it should look like, we can plug it in and then say what k should be. In this case, I found out the limit should look like 4. So I said, hey, if the second function was 4, we'd be winners. Now, I'm going to do the same type of problem right now. Exact same numbers, so you guys can get the trend. So f of, f of x equal to same exact equation, x plus 3, x minus 1 over x minus 1. And I'm going to change so the second equation. Whoops, that's going to be a bracket. Change the second equation to this. Now this problem looks a lot more harder, but it doesn't change the fundamental basic idea. We already said the limit as x approaches one of x plus three, x minus one over x minus one. This should equal to four. That's what it should look like. We said that already. 
So if I could fill that hole at 1, at x equals to 1, I need 2k plus 4 to equal to 4. Oops, to equal to, uh, to equal to 4. So we solve it like algebra 1. k is 0. If k was 0, we would have a continuous function again.